We've got quite a lot of information about digital design with Wokui and then how to make your GitHub repository and start the action that's going to create the GDS files for the ASIC. But there isn't that much information about how that side of things works. So this video aims to answer some of those questions by looking at the GitHub action workflow that takes your design and turns it into the ASIC files. Inside the repository, we have this .github link and then we have workflows and then one for the docs and one for the GDS. And every time you commit a change to your repository by changing a file and saving it, this action gets run. And then if it's successful, you'll get a green check. And if it's a fail, you'll get a red cross. And uh, we can take a look and walk our way through it. So. Um, this is going to get run on a push or on workflow dispatch. So that means that we could manually run it ourselves. I'll just show you what that looks like. Go on to actions. Um, choose the workflow job you want. And then you can say run workflow and then run it on a, a branch. And you click that button, it will kick it off. We have some environment variables set up here to do with installing the PDK. And the PDK is what contains all the things that the tools need to know about in order to create the ASIC files that are compatible with the Skywater Foundry for producing the chip. Here we're telling uh, GitHub that we want to be running on Ubuntu and to check out this repository. These are the instructions to build and install the PDK. And we're going to install some Python as well so that we can run this configure program. And what the configure program does is it checks what's going on in your info.yaml and it will either fetch the Wokwi Verilog or it will take your Verilog source files and create a little bit of custom tickle script that works with the config. So let's take a look at uh, that, the config, because the next step is building the GDS. And one of the things that we're doing is uh, taking the design and taking its config to build the ASIC files. So if we go to the source now we've got the config here and it is including a little user config and that is the thing that gets generated by the configure python script now all of this is a bit complicated i don't want to get into it but if you do want to learn more then you can uh, read uh, the documentation which is here openlane.readthedocs.io Here's the part where we tell it how big it is and that we're using a clock on port zero and that we're connecting it up to power. So this job will run and this job is the most likely one to fail, especially if your design gets too big. So we can have a look at uh, the logs in a minute. This is all pretty complicated, but most of this is about doing the pretty printing at the end. The most important part of all of this is this one here. So let's take a look at uh, some successful jobs. So uh, these, you can see we've got docs and GDS and test here. And uh, I can look at the GDS one by clicking on here. And we can see how this is all linked together. And these are the results. So this is all generated by that action. We've got the routing stats, cell usage by category, where we can click on one of these um, links and it's going to take us to the PDK documentation that tells us what that actual cell is, how big it is, um, like a little symbol here in its name. And we get to see the uh, layout. And then at the bottom, we have the 3D viewer and zoom in and out, right click to drag around. We've got the stats for the all the cells here. You can click on a cell and it will highlight it up here, tell you what that one is. And we've got some keys up here as well. Hide the fill, hides the power and the um, the top level routing. That lets us see a bit more easier what's going on. You can see we've got a fair number of flip flops in here. Not too much extra logic, quite a small design. Now, if we want to find out more about what happened when that GDS job run, we can click on there and then we get the logs. 
So this uh, lines up with the action file. That's over here. So uh, where we do the fetch Verilog and build config. That's done here. See the name is the same. It runs this script. We see that happening, the result. And then this is the important one, make GDS. This is a really huge log. I turned on verbose logging so we could see everything. And maybe now's a good time to show the open lane image. So our design comes in, it gets synthesized with Yosis. It runs through here, gets floor planned, routed, continues going, do some timing analysis, and then we stream it out to the GDS. Got a bit more information here on my uh, main course website, the Zero to ASIC course. That's a more in-depth course. Um, so feel free to check this out uh, on this terminology page. So we're going to see here we start off with the synthesis. There's absolutely tons of messages from Yosis. And we get some results of what kinds of cells are being used. And again, we've got different levels of optimization happening. Um, finally, it's going to get mapped to the actual cells in the PDK. And we can see these ones that be begin with Sky 130. And here's the final list from Yosis, 100 cells, um, ands and ors. Sometimes this won't actually be the final number because other cells will get added, like buffers and so forth. We get an estimation for the area. Then we move on. This is timing analysis, power distribution, more timing analysis, lots more timing analysis. Okay, here's the routing. And this is where your job is most likely to fail. So if we take a look at a job that failed, it basically runs out of space due to routing congestion and we get this error here. And then extracting um, the information and writing it out as the GDS and those GDS files are the ones that we're gonna actually send to the foundry. And they're what's used for generating the 3D files as well. And then right at the end, we get our flow complete. Uh, we get this one warning, which we can ignore because that's because we've set a very small core size. And importantly, there's no hold or setup violations. Those would cause the flow to fail. The rest of the flow is basically setting up all the things that we need to make this GitHub page here where you can see everything. You can download your GDS and see the stats and the layout and so forth. So that's it. That's a quick walk through how the GitHub action works to install OpenLane. The open source PDK takes your design, runs it through, gets the GDS files, and then creates this nice summary at the end. And if you're interested to learn more, then check out my in-depth course called the Zero to ASIC course.